Hello and welcome. Today we will talk about Chapter 8, Developing an Effective Ethics Program. So now that we've discussed a lot of different issues and the challenges that uh, business people face in the work environment, we need to roll up our sleeves and start actually thinking about what would be a very good program regarding ethics for your workplace. Or when you're a manager, what type of training would you need to do in order to provide guidance and develop the critical thinking muscles of your employees to make sure on a day-to-day -day basis they're making the right decisions. And since you will be a manager or an entrepreneur and owner of an organization, you want your employees to help you in the decision-making process to make sure all of you are making ethical choices and ethical decisions. This chapter regarding development of ethics programs first provides an assessment of the corporation as an entity in society, and then it gives you an overview of why businesses need to develop in organizational ethics programs. The chapter covers the factors that are requisite parts of an ethics program like a code of conduct, the role of ethics officers in the appropriate delegation of authority, effective ethics training, systems for monitoring and reporting ethical compliance, and the importance of continual efforts to improve the ethics program as part of the continuous improvement cycle. And finally, the chapter discusses the common mistakes that are often made when people are designing and implementing ethics programs in various organizations, institutions, and even uh, departments where uh, important decisions have to be made on a continuous uh, basis. In terms of an ethical dilemma, the chapter begins by telling you a little bit about some of the challenges that Todd faces. So let us look at this case and you can explain basically what is it that you would do? How would you solve these challenges? So here, this situation is about Todd. Even though Todd had just graduated from Indiana University, he interned with Jennings Department Store for two summers. This experience helped him get promoted to section manager once he graduated, Although Todd was young and most of the people he managed were older than him, they respected him because of his expertise and ability to form good relationships with his coworkers and with his customers. Several weeks ago, Todd began to hear rumors about one of the unit managers named Zara. He checked Zara's past financial reports and verified she was one of his better managers. Her unit posted the highest sales volume in growth, received positive customer feedback, and showed excellent cost control. The unit's people also did consistently well in inspections. In fact, Zara consistently rated higher than all the other managers for the last two years. Todd wondered why she hadn't been promoted. He knew upper management went over the financials with a magnifying glass. Todd decided to investigate a little further. Over the next few weeks, Todd began talking informally to those that knew Zara. He heard the same story over and over again, that Zara was kind, firm, great with the customers, and looked out for her employees. Zara even had a dedicated following of customers that came in to ask questions about the fashion and the accessories that were available. She had a client list that followed her tweets and made her department the cash cow of the store. Even though Zara had not graduated from college, she took night classes and was about a year away from her management degree. Next, Todd spoke to some of Zara's retail clients. 
The comments made him realize just how much he needed to learn about retailing. They spoke of Zara's advice on shoes, dresses, and jewelry. Some told him they routinely came in to give Zara Christmas gifts. He discovered that the store was doing so well in large part because this one employee cared about her clients and her co-workers. Yet, as he questioned some clients, Todd found something rather unique and odd. Some of the customers told him that for small items, they handed Zara cash and told her to keep the change. Todd soon discovered these sales were not rung up. Next, he checked the store's shrinkage measures or items that may have been stolen or damaged. The records indicated some shrinkage, but nothing significantly excessive. After a few weeks of investigations, Todd discovered Zara used the money or cash as unrecorded payments to her retail staff. She gave the money in the form of performance bonuses, overtime incentives, and off-hours work. He knew this was a violation of company procedures, yet he could not definitively prove Zara was actually taking the shrinkage money and using it to achieve the high performance that had become her trademark. It wasn't as if the employees were being overpaid compared to top management's 700 to 1 ratio income disparity. Most employees just scrapped by, as was evident by the company's high employee turnover rates. But Zara's turnover rate had always been low. Todd could not definitively say whether Zara was stealing. He did know there were some cash purchases that were not recorded properly. However, Zara was officially getting the money, whether through theft or simply by keeping the change the customers give her for purchases. He knew that because the funds were not listed as income. The extra wages to Zara's employees meant no payroll taxes were being withheld. This meant Jennings was at risk for a tax liability action by the Internal Revenue Services. Todd thought about what to do. He looked through the company's ethics code, but found the guidelines somewhat vague. The code itself only spanned two pages and did not provide any contact information for him to ask questions. Todd murmured beneath his breath, why did I start this mess? I should have left things alone. He knew nothing of the company is secret for long and his questions would soon alert others to start asking questions. On the other hand, he knew this had gone on for quite some time. Why had nobody noticed before? Questions for you. One, describe some of the weaknesses in Jennings' ethics program. Two, discuss the alternatives for Todd's. What actions could he possibly take? And third, how has Zara been given the opportunity to engage in misconduct? What variables in the environment, what opportunities are there for Zara and perhaps others to engage in such conduct and what can be done about them? So what would you do if you were in Todd's case in this situation? Todd must face the possibility that some of his best managers may be stealing in putting the company at risk for tax liability action by the IRS, that is the Internal Revenue Service in the United States. The company is Jennings Department Store, and its code of ethics is somewhat vague, sparse, and lacks any contact information. 
You should be aware that employee theft is often a common example of unethical behavior in most workplaces. So why does Jennings Code of Ethics not address this obvious industry threat of stealing? Anyhow, using the minimum requirements for ethics and compliance programs list that is mentioned in your textbook, you can see that Jennings appears to fail in all counts contained in your textbook. So the question is, would a strong code of ethics have stopped this type of unethical behavior of people stealing? Both Zara and Jennings appear to be at fault in this specific instant. Jennings needs a better ethics program in place to address issues that are similar to the one that Todd currently faces. However, employees have a moral obligation to both think and also act ethically. Is Zara following this implied obligation? A corporate culture without values in appropriate communication about ethics can facilitate individual misconduct in any workplace. The questions you could ask is, did Jennings communicate its ethical values to all employees in a timely and appropriate manner? If they did, why had no one uncovered Zara's behavior earlier? Fostering ethical decision-making within an organization requires terminating unethical employees and improving the company's ethical standards. Do Zara's actions warrant termination? Would you fire Zara if you were, in this case, the manager? Would the company fire its highest sales earner? Is Zara bad apple and could this bad apple lead to a bad barrel another issue here is the bonuses zara pays to her employees the company has paid no payroll taxes on these extra wages putting the company at risk with the internal revenue services while todd is aware this is against the company policy is Zara aware of the same policy? Is Zara aware that she's putting the company at risk? When opportunities to engage in unethical conduct abound, companies are somewhat vulnerable to both ethical problems as well as legal violations if their employees do not know how to make the right decisions. So you should think about all of the ethical issues in this case and others that are very similar to it in workplaces that you might encounter. And also you should reflect on the risks that are often courted by just remaining silent. So if you're remaining silent, is that actually condoning this action? Are you becoming a part of this unethical organizational culture if you remain silent and you do not intervene and you do not report this misbehavior in the workplace. So those are all some of the considerations regarding this specific case dilemma and others that we might face in a typical work environment. Remember to encourage employees to think critically for themselves and to practice and exercise the core values in the code of conduct and the code of ethics that your organization provides for them onto their day-to-day -day basis so they can make decisions that are fully aligned with your ethics statements, with your code of conduct, with your ethics program overall in the standards. Good luck. Remember that ethical behavior is a skill. So you need to police, evaluate, and improve your ethical muscles every single day so you can manage and guide others effectively in your department, in your organization, and in society in general. Good luck.